Right, so Israel, it would appear, have just managed to expose themselves as being the likely perpetrators of the Al Ali hospital attack through the very convenient production of an audio sound clip claiming to be two Palestinians talking about what happened and Palestinian Islamic Jihad being behind it. But Channel 4 have, in what I have to say, is a rare moment of me giving props to a mainstream media outlet, had it checked out, and it's fake. For Israel to have produced something like this so quickly, in the aftermath of events with global implications, with it desperate for public relations to be on their side around the world, with their ongoing portrayal as being victims themselves, this is gutsy reporting from media not usually known for it, and with massive implications for political and social discourse going forwards. Right, so Israel may have jumped the shark this time, and there may not be any way back from this this time. The Channel 4 report itself, a uh, brilliant piece of journalism uh, for a change, began as a look at the current state of Gaza and the damage done by an Israeli airstrike with concrete buildings pancaked, as they put it, completely flattened, reduced to rubble. Structural collapse was widespread over a given area around the site of impact, where, and where individual missiles happened to hit open ground and missed buildings, there were clearly well-defined large craters. And then they moved on to the state of things today at the Al Ali Baptist Hospital, which was the scene of so much devastation and the loss of so much life. But they did this in order to look at the damage there and do a little bit of a compare and contrast with what they'd just shown. And this was beginning to turn into a little bit of a detective story at this point. The craters in the grounds of the hospital were small, so they were the sort of things that you would expect from mortar shell impacts or artillery fire rather than a missile. Where the damage from an airstrike covers a large area surrounding the point of impact, that is not the case at the hospital or in the area of the hospital where Channel 4 decided to take a look around at the surrounding buildings, which had only suffered superficial damage. An adjoining church, for example, didn't even lose a single window, let alone be raised to the ground. So what does that tell us then? Well, it tells us that it wasn't a ground detonating missile that hit the hospital. It can't have been. There would have been more surrounding damage. As Channel 4 point out, though, that doesn't rule out some kind of an airburst munition, something that exploded in the air above, not making direct content, something that can still result in major loss of life, albeit with less structural damage. And this then brought the report to Israel's explanation of the events. And of course, as I covered in a recent video, they've come out with all sorts of excuses from there being no missile to not being their missile, to it being Hamas's missile, to it being Islamic Jihad's missile. The messaging has been very mixed, and absolutely that has raised suspicions but what channel 4 have also uncovered them saying might just be the smoking gun if you can forgive the unfortunate analogy now all the excuses they'd come out with on the night the demonstrations that kicked off across the middle east uh that night the demonstrations that have been occurring worldwide that's still going on today as there's protests in congress and the us as well israel knew from all of this reaction that they had a massive problem on their hands that if they didn't deal with this quickly if they couldn't prove it was Hamas responsible or one of their allies, then this was going to reflect horribly on them. And so it appears they got to work that night to get out a piece of audio the next day, allegedly of a conversation between two Palestinians discussing the hospital strike. So they held a big press conference in the morning, and this led to the official response claim we've all heard now that a misfiring Palestinian Islamic Jihad rocket was to blame. Daniel Hagari, the Israeli Defence Forces Head of Spokespersons Unit, announced at that press conference that, according to our intelligence, Hamas checked the reports, understood it was an Islamic Jihad rocket that had misfired, and decided to launch a global media campaign to hide what really happened. Well, really, Daniel. The damage survey Channel 4 conducted have already, it would appear, and their case is compelling, that this was not a ground-based detonation. Besides, this conference statement implies that Gazan-based terrorists, with the internet already having been cut off by Israel, by the way, mounted a global disinformation campaign that night. Really? You really think we're going to believe that one? You think we're really going to swallow that one? Sure. Okay, of course you do. Well, then it got to the audio clip. The proof, as it were, or wasn't. Anyway, they played it, and on the recording are two voices, who they claim to be two Hamas operatives, and they're saying... I'm telling you, this is the first time that we see a missile like this falling. That's why we are saying it belongs to the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. So now Israel is saying it was Hamas, and they're now just blaming Palestinian Islamic Jihad. I wish they'd make their minds up who they're blaming here. I'm getting confused by it. Hamas, naturally, have, does not deny this is them, called it an obvious fabrication. But here's the thing. 
Channel 4 took that audio clip to two independent Arab journalists and they've told them the same thing. Now some of you might think, well hang on, Hamas are Arabs, Palestinians are Arabs. Is this really impartial of Channel 4 to have taken them to taken this clip to other Arabs to, to analyse? But what I'm talking about here isn't some kind of technical audio analysis. That, it would seem, wasn't necessary. Perhaps it'll come, yet. Yeah. It's like somebody from London and somebody from Newcastle talking. To our ears here in the UK, we can easily tell who comes from where. Both are going to be English by their accents. And, and this is where Israel have fundamentally come unstuck because the Arab journalists listening to the men speaking on the clip, because the language they use, the accent, the dialect, the syntax and the tone of the two men speaking made it obviously clear to them that the peoples who were speaking in that clip were not Palestinian. The claim that the clip is authentic is simply not credible in their opinions. In other words, Israel have fabricated it to get the heat off them. There was more than just this to debunk Israeli claims, though. Israel claims the Islamic Jihad missile was launched from a cemetery close to the hospital. This is just to the west. Israel had previously published some video which allegedly showed the missile heading towards the hospital. But that video footage implied the rocket came from the east, not the west. And given how close by they alleged the location it was launched from is, the rocket was launched at far too high a trajectory. Their little conference presentation apparently managed to contradict itself too, hilariously, in this regard, as another slide in the same conference alleged the missile came from the southwest instead and not the west. So they can't even get their own presentation straight, such as the panic, such as the rush to get something out to get the heat off them, it seems. Well, which was it? Because obviously you have to be wrong about one of these locations, and in which case, why should we believe you about either of them? But on the flip side, Islamic Jihad have claimed it was an Israeli missile and they've said that they've got a warhead to prove it, but they couldn't actually produce it for Channel 4. So them being dishonest too doesn't help their cause either and it does fudge all of this unhelpfully. But it does very much look like Israel have blatantly fabricated evidence to try and prove it was not them, in which case what exactly have they got to hide? It's just one more piece of evidence, still circumstantial, in a case that seems to be stacking up more and more against Israel though for striking that hospital. And they've been caught red-handed fibbing on this occasion. What do you reckon? Time they fessed up. Do have your say in the comments below and be part of the conversation. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. More content out daily. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where, when we're speaking of dishonesty, how about that bit when Benjamin Netanyahu denied knowing Hamas were going to attack Israel, despite Egypt warning them it was going to happen? Did he allow his own citizens to be targeted? In which case, we still haven't got an answer to that, have we? But here's my take on it, and I'll hopefully see you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.